So today we are finally going to work with secant and cosecant. Um, part of the reason we don't do these right away is so that you get to know sine and cosine very well. And because we know that cosecant is sine's reciprocal and secant is cosine's reciprocal. And um, I often use a little um, trick or a sketch to help me graph cosecant. So let's take a look at the parent graph here. Again, this is just one cycle, but the parent graph, um, the period is 2 pi and cosecant is undefined at zero, all right? And cosecant in one cycle has three asymptotes, one at the beginning, one at the end, and one in the middle, all right? And we know that the range is everything bigger than one or equal to one and less than or equal to negative one. So here's the parent graph, but I want to also show you uh, oh, technically we know that in that the amplitude is infinity because there's not a max or a min or relative max or min, but we know that we have, um, well, I shouldn't say there's not a relative max, relative min, but we do have key points here and these would be relative maxes and relative min. So I misspoke there, but anyway, we know that this these points are one and negative one. Now, we always emphasize that knowing what's going on at zero for all the trig functions, and that is true. Cosecant is undefined at zero. But another way that I do this is I hopefully, and you do as well, know sine very well. So what I did here was I did a sketch of sine, and this is why in the first couple of days of the unit, I had you graph the functions and their reciprocals together to show you there was a graphical relationship. They fit together for a reason. There's a relationship there. So when I go to graph cosecant, the first thing I do is I know it's sine's reciprocal, so I graph sine, and then I do a sketch of what cosecant, how it relates to sine. So by doing that, that tells me, oh, I have an asymptote at the beginning, an asymptote at the end, and an asymptote in the middle. Okay, let's take a look at secant. All right, secant also has a period from zero from at two pi. All right, um, we know that it has relative maxes and relative mins at one and negative one. Um, and we know that it starts at zero one, much like its partner or its reciprocal function cosine. All right, so again, knowing what's going on at zero is always critical for every function. But also, what how I, it helps me is I sketch in cosine because we should know cosine very well. And again, as I just said, there's a graphical relationship with a function and its reciprocal. That's why I had you do those at the beginning of the unit. And so when I see this and I graph my cosine graph, I know that they are tangent to each other at their maxes and mins. So that tells me then at zero, I'm up at one. My next angle is an asymptote. And then at my next angle, I'm down at negative one, and my next angle is an asymptote. So this is one cycle, because if you think about it, here's one curve, and if I put these two together, they make another curve. Okay, so um, remember that when you're graphing cosecant, sketch sine out to the side, and when you're graphing secant, sketch cosine out to the side, and that's gonna help you decide on which, um, on what's going on at zero. Okay, so we're gonna use some examples or some variations from page 28 for some notes um, on secant and cosecant graphing the transformations. Uh, so you may want to go ahead if you want to use the graph paper template that you have, or you can go ahead and just take out a piece of paper and sketch the notes here. Okay, so the first example we are going to do uh, again, page 28, I've picked some from there or changed them a little bit. We're going to do y equals 4 cosecant of x. So just like always, we're going to list out our amplitude, our period, if there's vertical translation, our x scale, etc. And again, like everything, if you need to stop this while you get your paper and your graph set up, please do that. Okay, so we know that technically there's uh, amplitude, there's no, uh, it's infinity because there's no high point or low point because they extend infinitely uh, positive to negative infinity. However, we know that we have key points, our relative maxes and relative mins um, at plus or minus four. All right, same kind of pattern that you had with um, cosine, 
as far as you know or sign that if this is a four, you know that you're gonna have a, tan, a max or a min at four, okay? It's a key point if we wanna say that as well. The period is two pi as its parent graph, so the x scale would be that divided by four, which is pi over two. Okay, so first of all, what I would do is, if I see that this is uh, cosecant, what I would do is I would go ahead and say, oh, cosecant is sines reciprocal. So I'm gonna sketch sine, and then I have a visual as to, oh, there's cosecant. So if I know this, that tells me then, so if my period's two pi, I'm counting by 90s, pi over two pi, three pi over two, my quadrannals, that tells me that I'm gonna have an asymptote at my middle angle, or at my, uh, at zero, always knowing what's going on at zero is critical. I'm gonna have an asymptote at the end. I'm gonna have an asymptote in the middle. All right, and this is gonna be a vertical stretch of four, which means it's gonna be four away from the horizontal axis. Um, and so I will have a relative min there at four and a relative min at negative four. If you can see in the green, I know there's sometimes a glare here. If you can see in the green, I sketched in the sine curve or what would be y equals four sine of x. So here's one cycle. So we're gonna do the same approach. We're gonna graph two cycles as we always had for all of our graphs when doing transformations. Gonna do the same approach, negative pi over two, negative pi, negative three pi over two. So if there's an asymptote here, there's an asymptote at the end, there's an asymptote in the middle. All right, so this graph will repeat this graph so that meant down here i'm down at negative four asymptote up here i'm at four all right how does this change would this would just be a vertical stretch of four okay next one y equals two secant of one third x so we're going to list our amplitude period x scale um anything other changes Okay, so the amplitude technically is infinity because there's not a distance to a high point or a low point, an absolute higher point. But we know that there's going to be key points, our relative maxes and mins, at plus and minus 2. My period is 2 pi divided by a third, so it's 6 pi. So this is going to take one of these cycles will be three times as long as the parent graph. So if I take six pi and divide by four, my scale is three pi over two, which means I'm counting by 270 degrees. Okay, so the first thing that I would do is I would go ahead and sketch secant as cosine's reciprocal. So there's cosine. So therefore, that gives me an idea of what secant is doing. Okay, so I am not undefined at zero. And since this has a vertical stretch of two, I'm gonna be up at two here. Oops, I got ahead of myself. I got ahead of myself. I should have labeled my angles first. So I'm counting by 270 or three pi over two. So three pi over two plus three pi over two is six pi over two, which is three pi. Six pi over two plus three pi over two is nine pi over two. Nine pi over two plus three pi over two is 12 pi over two, which is six pi. And then I, to get my second cycle, I can just go to the negative angles. Negative three pi over over two, negative three pi, negative nine pi over two, negative six pi. Sometimes when we don't have common angles or sometimes just in general, we can use degrees to kind of help us count and then we can always change those to radians. But in this case, you know, counting by 270s may not be as helpful. All right, now let's go back to what's going on here. We know that this is not undefined at zero. All right, so I know that this has a vertical stretch of two, so I'm gonna be up at two here. So I will have an asymptote at my next angle. At my next angle, I will be down at negative two. At my next angle, I will have an asymptote. And at my next angle, I will have a point at two. One cycle, then if I go to the left side, continue on. My next angle, uh, I have an asymptote. My next angle, I'm at negative two. Next angle, asymptote. Next angle, I'm up at two. So we have graphed two cycles here. Now, I also wanted to mention, I didn't write on here, but this is vertically stretched. It's twice as tall. This is horizontally stretched. Um, and so if we're gonna write our comparison like we always did, if the parent graph um, has a period of two pi, which it does, that means I could put three parent graphs into one cycle of this. 
I don't tend to sketch in parent graphs with secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent just because of all of the asymptotes. I think tangent and cotangent makes it, we can with that one, those, but um, it was just much easier to explain and show comparisons with sine and cosine since there aren't asymptotes. Okay, let's go to another example. Um, the next example is y equals 3 plus cosecant of 2x. 3 plus cosecant of 2x. Okay, so I'm going to list out my amplitude period, x scale, and we know there's going to be a vertical translation on this. So technically, we know my amplitude is plus or minus infinity because I don't have an absolute high point or low point, but I know I'm going to have key points at plus or minus 1. So my key points are only going to be 1 away from my horizontal axis. My period is 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. So take my period and divide by 4 to get my x scale. So uh, I'll be counting by 45s. This is going to be moved up 3. Okay, so I'm going to do like I always do. I'm going to figure out my angles first. All right, this is cosecant, so I'm going to graph one cycle on the positive side, one cycle on the negative side. I'm counting by 45, so I'll have pi over 4 plus pi over 4. 45 plus 45 is 90, which is pi over 2. 90 plus 45 is 135, which is 3 pi over 4. 135 plus 45 is 180. All right, and then I'll come on this side and do the negative, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4, negative pi. Now, to decide what is going on, um, I'm going to sketch, this is cosecant, so it is sines reciprocal. So we can see that how they relate here, that they are do not have points, or cosecant does not have a point on the x-axis the y-axis, I'm sorry. So therefore, I know I have an asymptote there, and then I, if I, the period's pi, I'll have an asymptote at the end, and then an asymptote in the middle. Now, something else that is going on is this has moved up three. So I'm gonna draw my new horizontal axis, and now everything I do is based on this new horizontal axis. Okay, so if I were doing this and had written this out as I was talking, I would have done my angles, I would have sketched my relationship with sine and cosecant to find out what was going on at zero, and then I would have drawn my new horizontal axis. Now, since I don't have a point at zero, I know it's undefined there, so I would have drawn this asymptote, this asymptote, asymptote in the middle. Now, I know that my key points are plus or minus one, which means they are one away from the horizontal axis. So people get vertical translation mixed up with amplitude. We already moved it up. My key points tell me how far away my relative max and relative min are from the horizontal axis. So this will be one away, this will be one away. So asymptote, next angle, I'm up here at four, one away. Next angle, I have an asymptote. Next angle, I'm at two, I'm one away. And the next angle, I'm at an asymptote. And then I would repeat on the left side, down at negative two. Uh, positive two rather, one away from the horizontal axis, asymptote, one away from the horizontal axis at four, asymptote. How does this compare? Um, it was moved up three, and um, we have a vertical, I'm sorry, a horizontal shrink because the period is two pi, so I could fit half of a parent graph into this cycle. Okay, last one y equals negative 3 minus 2 secant of 1 half x. y equals negative 3 minus 2 secant of 1 half x. All right, so let's list our, let's list our amplitude, period, x scale, and vertical translation. Technically, the amplitude's plus or minus uh, infinity, but I will have points, my maxes and mins, relative max, relative min, rather, will be 2 away from my horizontal axis, my period is 2 pi divided by a half, which is 4 pi. I'm going to take that and divide by 4 to get my scale, so I'll be counting by pi, so that makes it easy. And this is going to be vertically translated down 3. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, same approach as always, I'm going to list my angles to get my two cycles. I'm counting by pi, so this would be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, go to the negative side. Now, my entire graph is moved down three, so I'm drawing in a horizontal axis. Now, everything I do is based on this horizontal axis. 
All right, now my next decision is what's going on at zero. I make that decision. Secant is cosines reciprocal. So I sketch in cosine and then I sketch in secant because there's a relationship there. So I do have a point on the y-axis, so there is no asymptote. Okay, so now I'm operating off of this horizontal axis. Now what else is going on? Well, we said our key points are two away, but it is also reflected. So I am actually down now here at negative five. My next angle would be an asymptote. And again, that's knowing what's going on from the parent graph of secant and knowing this relationship. My next angle, I have a point. It is two away because of the this, two away from the horizontal axis. My next angle, I have an asymptote. And my next angle, I have a point that's two away from the horizontal axis. Then I continue on the negative side and do the same. So you can see here, if I have this part of the curve, I have this part of the curve over here. My next angle is an asymptote. Next angle is two away. Next angle is an asymptote. Next angle is two away. Whoops, that should be going the other direction actually. And there are two cycles. And think about why there are two cycles showing. If I move this down here, that would give me two cycles, just for you to have a visual. Okay, how does this compare? Well, it's reflected, it was moved down three, every kind of change we've made so far. Um, it was vertically stretched, it would be twice as tall because it's stretched away from the horizontal. And uh, it was horizontally stretched by two, which meant I could fit two parent graphs into one cycle. So again, with secant and cosecant, it's the same approach as we've used with all of our trig functions. Take your period, divide by four. Um, the key here is knowing the relationship. When you have cosecant, it is sines reciprocal. Sketch that graph together so that shows you that you will have an asymptote at zero for cosecant. And for secant, it is cosines reciprocal and you will have a point on the axis at zero.